part 3 of the Easy Deep Sky Astrophotography Guide that shows you how to take pictures of deep space objects like galaxies, nebulas and star clusters using nothing but your DSLR camera on a standard tripod, no need for a telescope in this guide. This is the gear that I use, it's an entry level DSLR camera with a uh, shutter release and a telephoto lens and just a normal Joby Gorillapod tripod. So let's get started, um, we're going to load up Deep Sky Stacker for the initial part of the processing. Uh, this is a PC program that's free to download. So what we're going to need to do is come down to uh, processing and then uh, open the file. And there's one that's already stacked, ready to go, because it automatically will auto-save this for you once it's stacked the pictures up. So we're going to open this one up. This is all, also of M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. So once this opens up, it'll start to load the picture up which is 715 frames all stacked one on top of each other giving around 15 minutes of exposure time you can see in this picture the stars are starting to appear but it's quite a dark picture um, almost universally grey and you, you can't really see the galaxy to start off with apologies for the quality of the images here this is the down to the uh, recording screen capture software uh, it'll look much better on your screen now, I know where M51 is going to be around about here, and I know this because I'm using these three stars here, and then these three stars on the other side uh, to, to form a pattern which tells me that M51 will be there. So in order to get some initial processing, we're going to do what's called a curve stretch. We're going to stretch all those greys all right out to bring the detail out of the picture. And the way we do this is make a curve with this line, this linear line. So what I'm going to do is link the settings to start with and I want to widen this graph of data a little bit. So we just grab this and pull it to the left a little bit. And what that does is it just slightly widens up or spreads out all the data which is all included in, the, in that spike. So now we need to create a curve out of this line here. We use the luminance to do that. So I'm going to bring this, the dark slider all the way to the right and you can see the effect that has on the on the curve line and then I'm just going to adjust the highlights here and you can see I've lost that nice S shape that I'm trying to get so we're going to adjust the mid-tone and we're going to adjust the slider for the angle and you can see how that brings in a nice S shape. Now the steeper the line you get the more detail you'll get but you can start to bring in quite a lot of uh, background noise if you're not careful so you do just have to sort of play around with these a little bit but what you want is the dark as flat as you can get it and then quite a sharp upturn because what we do next is make sure everything's linked still we bring the mid slider all the way to the right and that the idea is I'm trying to bring the data into as much of that curve as I can in that sort of area at the start so I'm going to slide it across and try and take as much room as I can just find a position and then we click apply once I'm sort of once I'm happy with my positioning might just need to adjust this a little bit to see what we can get see if we can get as much of that line running through the graph as I, as I can so as you can see I've steepened the line a bit more and we we'll just adjust this okay let's try apply and see what we get so having applied that you can see that more stars are starting to appear and hopefully, yep, there it is. M51 is, is beginning to show itself. Again, it will look better on your screen than it does at the moment. Uh, that's just the video capture software. Which also is a free download in case you wanted to do it. And there you go, you can see M51 appearing. A better quality picture now. So we'll just go ahead and just play around with this luminance, play around with our curve a little bit, adjust the angle, adjust the positioning and see if we can get the best possible image we can. So again I'm just going to move this down and see what happens if we put it down here. You can always press undo if, uh, if you don't like what you see and you want to go back to the last bit. So we just apply this, see what happens. That's brought it out but it's also created quite a lot of noise in the picture. So I'm just going to undo that. Now 
There's also a saturation channel. If you want to add some additional color, you can move that up. I'd recommend moving it up to about 18%. Uh, because quite often the Deep Sky Stacker will give you quite a colorless picture to start with. So here we are just adjusting it. And now I've got a lot of the line going through the uh, the part of the, the histogram part of the data, which is all included in that small graph. It's quite awkward this one because it's so narrow. Your picture you might find will be wider sometimes and that's much easier to place on the graph. Here we are, we just adjust that and see what we get. Okay, that's really dark in the background as you can see. And there we are, if we zoom in you can start to see the detail and I think we'll leave it at that stage. And uh, go ahead and save this now, so you need to save the image to, to file. And we'll call this M51. And then the next step will be to put this into, I like to use iPhoto, because I find that's very simple to use and can give you some good results. So we'll uh, just save this now, making sure that we've got the box ticked to make sure the adjustments are, are applied to the image and not embedded within it. And let's save that now as a uh, .tiff or .tiff file. There we are, so now we're in the Mac. We're just going to load that picture into iPhoto, and here it is. And that's what it looks like when we processed it straight out of DSS or Deep Sky Stacker. So now I want to really try and bring some detail and make this more of a final image. So we go down to Edit. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to Quick Fixes and then Crop the Picture. and we just adjust the box here. This helps take out that the gradient that you can see the difference in the background by zooming in on the image it becomes more of a uniform colored background which is easier to manage. So you click done having placed it in the middle of the cropped box and there it is and you can see you can see the uh, noise in the background. So now we go to adjustments and you can see we've got exposure, contrast, saturation, definition, highlights, and this very useful denoise at the bottom there. And then you've got a levels adjust at the top. So start off, I just increase the exposure a little bit, brighten up the image. And then, uh, then I'll go on to contrast. I'll just bring the contrast up a little bit to try and just get a bit of dark in the background and bring out the galaxy a little bit. You can play about with all of these in these dials to see what image you like, but this is the way I like to do it. I tend to leave these three and then I might sharpen things up a little bit, but that will tend to increase the noise as well in the background. So this is usually just a very slight change, probably isn't required at all. And then I'm quite heavy with the denoise, and although this blurs the image, uh, it does reduces that background noise, which is what we want to try and take out if we can. You can adjust the colors then if you want using the uh, temperature and tint, although I've left those alone on this one. And you can see by bringing up the denoise it has blurred things but it's also reduced the background. So now I take the black point on the level and I just slide that up till all the noise is gone. Which you can see is just about there. And then I take the midpoint of, and slider and slide that to the left which brings the, the galaxy out. And I bring that just till the background starts to show noise again and then adjust again the left black point till the noise goes and bring the midpoint closer to bring the galaxy out again to you just to you just about see some noise in the background and just keep making these fine adjustments until I'm happy that I've got the best possible picture I can with the brightest galaxy and the background free of any noise